welcome students so uh, till my last lecture we completed the process of uh, analysis of the financial statements we discussed the process of analysis of the financial statements and we learned about the two techniques that is say uh, ratio analysis and the cash flow statement and uh, there are some other techniques also so these are the two prominent techniques generally used and uh, there are certain other techniques also so i'll talk to you just for a minute or two in the passing reference about those techniques and then i'll move to the third part that is about the uh, say uh, regulatory framework of the financial reporting in india that is uh, for your reference i would like to discuss so uh, the other techniques of the financial analysis if you want to learn about there are very easy techniques means any book or anywhere you can easily find if you have any book on the financial and the corporate reporting or the corporate accounting or financial accounting you will easily find those techniques those techniques are so you can call it as common size statements common size statements and second is the comparative statements comparative statements so these are the other by, by preparing other statements also you can uh, do the uh, financial analysis furthermore also if you want to understand about the progress of the company or the say performance of the company uh, common size statement is uh, other way around you can call them as a common size or maybe the multi step income statement multi step income statement and here you call it as horizontal statements so in this case what is uh, what we do in the common size statement that we take the one important figure as common say for example you talk about the sales is a common figure and against that figure we compare what is the percentage of the cost of goods sold similarly what is the percentage of the raw material similarly what is the percentage of the uh, say manufacturing expenses similarly what is the percentage of uh, other say administrative and selling and distribution expenses so as a percentage of the sales so taking one item as common and then comparing the other figures against that item we uh, do by preparing the common size statement almost the same thing we did in the multi step income statement also so the difference in the multi step income statement was that we calculated the profit at the multi steps we didn't jump to the simple net profit after tax but we calculated first of all the total sales gross sales minus excise duty then net sales and then we uh, say subtracted from this was the cost of raw material then manufacturing expenses then we got the got the cost of goods sold and then we subtracted other expenses so we got the profit before tax and uh, depreciation interest and tax then we got the, the subtracted depreciation then profit before interest and tax then we subtracted interest then the profit before interest and tax so that was calculation of the multi uh, calculating the profit or income in in a multi step way but in the common size statement we do the same thing almost but we don't compare any profit or income we simply compare the different items which are making the income statement uh, profit and loss account you uh, uh, you can you can easily compare the items of the income statement profit and loss account with one common figure and if you take that against the sales uh, what is the cost of goods sold what is the raw material what is the manufacturing expenses what is the administrative and selling and distribution expenses that way we can prepare the common size statement by following the multi steps so there is a one way of doing the analysis and this analysis is largely done uh, with the income statement with the profit and loss account we don't do it in the balance sheet for the balance sheet you can use the second that is a comparative statement so for analysis of your uh, profit and loss account of the you can do it in the balance sheet also because in the balance sheet you can take the uh, total uh, assets uh, as a common uh, figure and against the total assets uh, You here you take it as the total assets as a common figure, and against the total assets you subtract the what are the fixed assets, what is the percentage of fixed assets, what is the percentage of current assets, and what are the what is the percentage of investments, what is the percentage of loans and advances, what is the percentage of prepaid expenses. It can be done also. 
So, means uh, you can take one item as a common in the balance sheet in the financial position statement and then you can compare the other uh, say uh, subsequent say parts belonging to that category with against that major category and then you can say that you can easily make out that out of the total assets, what percentage of the total asset is fixed assets, what percentage of the total asset is the current assets because we want to know that current assets level should be as low as possible and uh, fixed assets should be high. So, similarly prepaid expenses should also be low whereas the loans and advances and investments can be more. So, we can easily make out that what constitute the fixed assets, what, what constitutes the uh, say liabilities also. You can take the total liabilities and out of the total liabilities what is the percentage of internal funds, what is the percentage of external funds, loans and advance means loans and uh, debentures and then the current liabilities. So, that way the common size statement can be prepared and this is called as a vertical statement. This is a vertical statement, this is one statement that can be prepared and the one analysis can be done. Then the second way of analyzing, another technique of analyzing the financial statements is the say horizontal analysis by preparing the comparative statement, by preparing the comparative statement. So, normally we do prepare the comparative statement, we can use, you can do it for the uh, income statement also, for the income statement also and for the balance sheet also. So, for example, largely we use it for analyzing the balance sheet and if you say prepare the horizontal statement, you can take one company and then you can say ABC limited and uh, see uh, we can have the figures here. Say for example, you are talking about this is the asset side. So, you can say the assets of the company, if you take the assets of the company in the assets, total assets of the company, you can say that uh, we will be, we'll be taking figure not only for one year, we can take the figure of 2014, then we take the figures of the 2015 and then we take the figures for 2016 or we can take the figures for other years also. So, normally we take the two years figures. So, you can take the figures of say uh, 2014, uh, 15 and 16 and then we make the one column here that is a column for increase or decrease. So, in C, you see that what was the level of your assets, say fixed assets you talk about. So, if you take the fixed assets, the here it was 100 and it has become 110. So, there is increase by uh, 10. It can be in percentage terms also, it can be in the absolute terms also. Similarly, you talk about the current assets, current assets were here uh, say 50 and now they have become 60. So, there is increase by 10. So, you can easily make out that what is the, how the, how the things are moving uh, out maybe when you are moving from the one year to the another year, comparative position of the company is what, comparative picture of the company is what, whether the company is improving its asset base and the fixed term as long term assets are increasing as compared to the current assets or current assets are increasing as compared to the fixed assets or both are static. So, a trend can be worked out. This is called as a trend analysis also. A trend can be worked out. So, this statement is called as comparative statement. This is a horizontal analysis because you do it this way. And the common size you prepare this way that is called as the vertical analysis. So, these are some and uh, here you call it uh, them as a trend analysis also. This is going to give you the trend. If you put the uh, life, say in the horizontal analysis, if you add some more years, the 2, 3, 4, 5 years if you make and you draw a line, it will give you a trend that over the period 2010 to 16 how the assets have moved. So, you can draw the lines and you can uh, understand the trend of the firm and you can understand the whole process. So, these are some uh, further ways of analyzing the uh, income statements or the financial statements that apart from ratio analysis and the cash flow statement which we discussed in detail, you can use the common size statement, you can use the comparative statement and you can know the company in which you are interested or you are somebody else is interested and you are acting as a financial analyst to him or her. Then you can use these techniques and by doing a detailed analysis by using the third, these third some other techniques, some other techniques means in the third category, common size, comparative state, common size statements, comparative statements, then yes, it can be done and it will give you a better picture about the overall financial performance and position of the company in which 
uh, you are interested or somebody else is interested and you are acting for him and her as the financial analyst. So, with this I complete the process of the uh, analysis of the financial statements and now in the remaining uh, this class and in the one more next class, last class, I will be talking for the reference purpose, not in detail, I will be talking to you about the financial reporting process in India. So, now let us move to this part that is the regulatory framework of the financial reporting in India and we will be discussing this to some extent because this uh, largely uh, is, a, is a structure and system which is available uh, uh, everywhere, different sources are there and this information is easily available. But as a student of financial statement analysis and reporting, you should be knowing something here and we should be discussing something here. So, I thought of say, uh, say enlightening you about the financial reporting process. That is a regulatory financial reporting process in the existing in India uh, that is in the country and let us discuss something about that. So, this is we are going to talk in the remaining part of this lecture and then in the next one more lecture. Look, when we talk about the regulatory framework of the financial reporting in India or in any country, you see uh, there are the different uh, say uh, bodies because in an economy, if there is a business, then there are some uh, rules and regulations of running the business and adherence to those rules and regulations, either the companies have to say uh, ensure themselves and companies are doing that also. There are certain aberrations like uh, Satyam uh, case or maybe sometime uh, Harshad Mehta was a case earlier which created a problem in the securities market then this uh, Satyam case is there then some you can call it as Vijay Malia's ca case is there. So, these are some cases when the things are not moving in the right direction or in the desired direction, but generally the things are uh, means uh, uh, co correct and the business is also say acting as a very responsible uh, stakeholder in the market, but sometimes it creates the problem. So, see that when we are talking about the financial statements, preparation of the financial statements, it means what is the purpose of financial statements? Means if the business is going on and uh, we are manufacturing certain products or creating, rendering certain services in the market, we are doing it on the continuous basis. And uh, we are getting raw material, converting that into finished product. Finished product is going to market. Firm is getting back its funds through sales, and it's getting the profit. Shareholders are getting dividend. Uh, employees are getting salaries. Government is getting the taxes, and people are getting the good quality product. So, what is the purpose of preparing the financial statements? Why the government has fixed the say say uh, uh, the requirement of preparing the financial statements, and why it is in mandatory has been made mandatory to uh, say uh, have uh, the financial statements once in a period of 12 months that is a accounting period we call it as the accounting period why it is necessary why it is required that is a million dollar question here and then means arises the need of financial reporting means when we prepare the these financial statements earlier these were the two statements that is the income statement and balance sheet which means by using these statements preparing these statements uh, every 12 months, it uh, company ensures and company reports to the different stakeholders that how the business is going on. Different stakeholders means when we talk about the different stakeholders, uh, first are the shareholders, then means first are the lenders, debenture holders, shareholders, employees of the company, uh, even the customers of the company, consumers of the company. Then the tax authorities and the public means the, then the government and then the public at large. Everybody sometimes remain uh, say concerned about the overall financial performance of certain companies. Say for example, now there are some popular companies like Reliance Industries or Infosys or Utata Group companies or some other important companies. So, people generally even general public also remains uh, concerned about it. Say when we open the newspaper in the morning and on the business page of Times of India when we find that uh, this, these are the developments with regard to Tata's growth or Tata has acquired this company or Tata's profit is going to go up this quarter or this uh, say year or Reliance Industries financial performance is that. It means it does not mean that I am the shareholder of Tata's companies or I am the shareholder of Reliance companies, but when I open the page of the newspaper, I am really interested to look at that news that how one important industrial house or the business house in my country is doing. So, in that case, even the general public is also is an very important stakeholder. So, by preparing these financial statements, that is the 
uh, say trading and profit and loss account, you can call this statement as the income statement also. And then the balance sheet, we report to the different stakeholders that how we have been doing in the past 12 months, whether we have ended up with the profit or with the loss or if there is a profit, then how much profit is there? And if there is a loss, how much loss is there? And whether our profit is going up in the current year as compared to previous year or our loss has come down in the current year as compared to the previous year. So, all these things are the miss are some objectives which are met with the help of preparing the income statement. Similarly, we prepare the balance sheet and by preparing the balance sheet, we uh, confirm that our assets are equal to liabilities and vice versa and we convey to the interested stakeholders that yes, we uh, are doing a good business, balance sheet or the financial position is balanced, it is within control and nothing is wrong in the form and means all the stakeholders should rest it assured that we are doing a good quality business, the company communicates. And now the third statement is also very important mandatory statement that is the cash flow statement that under the cash flow statement be companies tell to the outside world or to different stakeholders that say uh, larger chunk of the profit is from the operations if it is a manufacturing organization and uh, is from financing activities if it is a financial company and from the investing activity it is if it is a investment company. So, that is uh, the way and that is the objective of the financial uh, statements or preparing the especially the cash flow statement. So, in this process of uh, say preparing these three mandatory statutory statements, the purpose of preparing these statements is means uh, in a way reporting of the financial affairs of the companies, business organizations. And by preparing these statements, apart from these statements, we prepare some other statements also, but they are not mandatory, they are only for the internal control. Many companies analyze these financial statements, they prepare an analytical report also by doing detailed ratio analysis or sometimes by preparing comparative statement, common size statements, but they are not for the external reporting. For the external reporting, only these three statements are mandatory and they are prepared. This is the one part that preparation of the financial statements in itself is a one act of reporting of the financial performance of the companies. Now, the second question arises here, what is the basis of reporting? What facilitates the uh, better reporting of the financial affairs or the business affairs to the outside world or to the rest of the world? When we started discussion on this subject, I started with one thing that the basis of preparation of the financial statements is or financial reporting now I would call it as that the basis of that preparation of the financial statements and the financial reporting I have already talked to you is that is the gap generally accepted accounting principles generally accepted accounting principles and when you talk about the generally accepted accounting principles we talk about so many things. We talk about the accounting concepts, then we talk about the accounting conventions, then we talk about the accounting standards and then we talk about the different types of accounts and uh, then we talk about the different rules of passing or recording the business transactions in the books of accounts. This all though the large component major components are these three that is the concepts and conventions and accounting standards, but these are also the ancillary parts of the gap that is different types of accounts and their rules or recording rules of recording the transactions in the books of accounts. So, accounting standard is are the most important part because when we talk about the accounting standards means in the gap we talk about something that it is a, it's a, it's a standardized way to report the corporate information or the financial information of the corporates or companies uh, to the rest of the world. So, that everybody not in India, everywhere if they look at the balance sheet, they understand it, it in the same sense or in the same meaning. And when you talk about the gap, every country has its own gap, right. We have US gap, we have Indian gap, we have other countries means every country has a gap, they have their own generally accepted accounting principles and a common uh, 
body which is say connecting each uh, country to the other country and coordinating amongst the countries is the another body which is called as a IASB International Accounting Standards Board. So, it means when you talk about uh, US gap they have US standards when you talk about the say uh, Indian gap you in India has its own Indian standards and when you talk about the uh, IASB, IASB has also developed its own standards which now are called as IFRS International Financial Reporting Standards. So, first every country is developing its own standards and then they are trying to harmonize their own standards with the world standards they are international not world standards with the international standards and they are the IFRS. Currently, we have two systems of accounting. One is the national system of accounting which is there in every country uh, being observed by say following the every country's uh, accounting standards and then we are because now we are becoming a global village and there are means boundaries for the business are shrinking. It means uh, you see that today if you want to buy any product being manufactured in any part of the world earlier was being manufactured in any part of the world that is available today in India. The companies which were uh, earlier the you can call it as external uh, uh, operators they were not allowed to operate in India in, because India was a closed economy today you find these companies are working here and not working here sometimes they are manufacturing more here and supplying it to their home country also to the other countries in the world. So, when you are dealing across the boundaries across the countries in that case it means if India has a one different accounting standards other country has a different accounting standards if production is in India and sales are to be done product is to be transferred from India to UK or to US or to Japan in that case some, there comes the problem means at what price the product should be sent means in at what price it should be priced in India at what price it should be transported or sent to Japan or US or UK. So, transfer pricing is one important issue. So, what is going on now slowly and steadily we are moving to a process we have national accounting and we have international accounting and slowly and steadily we are moving from the national and international accounting to the world accounting. So, world accounting would be the, the day, day when there would be no national and international standards. All the standards will be same all around the world. All the countries are valuing their fixed assets, their current assets, their liabilities, their incomes and expenses in the same way as one company is doing in India, same way the other company is doing in the US. So, that means we are moving slowly and steadily complete harmonization of the accounting standards, but we have not done been able to do that so far, but the recently the development has been that say uh, we had uh, say common national standards, but now most of the say uh, international community members means different countries in the world they have ha agreed that they would like to converge their national standards with the international accounting standards means you can call them as the international financial reporting standards given by the international accounting standard board. So, means that is a process which you will have means a time will come when you have a common gap, but we do not have a common gap today every country has its own gap and on the basis of that the financial statements are prepared and financial reporting is done. So, I will take you through this journey quickly this uh, presentation and later on you can go through this presentation yourself and uh, some broad provisions I have given here and then you can uh, get to know about the provisions of this discussion. So, first of all let us talk about the uh, say objectives of financial reporting in India or maybe not in India anywhere in the world you can say. So, there are the different objectives first important objective is to provide financial information about the reporting entity that is useful to the existing and potential investors lenders and other creditors in making decisions about providing resources to the entity or that business organization or that company. This is the first objective means 
Should you become an investor in this company by buying the share of that company? Should you lend money as a financial institution to that company or should you supply your material to that company on credit basis? You will do that if your funds are secured. So that is only possible if the financial reporting is, is, is uh, you are rating through with the help of financial reporting. When you are analyzing these financial statements of the companies, you are able to make out that it is, this is a good company, this is a strengthful company as we have seen in case of uh, uh, the companies like Skyline, we have analyzed the Skyline or earlier we have analyzed here Grassim Industries. So if you look at their, whatever they are reporting through their financial statements, you can find out this, they are the good companies and nobody will even think twice to deal with those kind of the companies. So that is the purpose. Second objective is to facilitate decisions involving buying, selling or holding equity and debt instruments and providing or settling loans and other forms of the credit. Very useful information you can get from the financial statements only because it is the information about the internal affairs of the company. So finally, you can say it is useful to investors whether to buy the shares of that company or sell the shares of the company whose shares they are already having or hold it for some period of time. Maybe the situation is not good. Maybe in case of the Grassim Industries, we have seen that they are say, uh, price went up to 2700 rupees, 2778 rupees uh, in January, but later on it fell down. So maybe people uh, deciding that when it fell down in March and people were holding the share, they could have decided hold it further for some period of time. Again, it will go up to 2700 or 2800 and if it reaches 2700 or 800 or touches 3000 rupees, I will sell and I will get the maximum returns. So that way the decisions are taken useful to lenders and other creditors. Financial institutions lend big money to the business uh, undertakings and they have to have some basis of uh, substantiating their decisions that whether they should lend or not. And then it is useful to the creditors also. You see that most of the business is on the credit. So suppliers supply the uh, lot of inputs to the companies on credit and they have to be sure that how this company is doing. So whatever the company is reporting in the financial statements, you can easily analyze as a supplier and you can take a decision about that. So these are the three important objectives of the financial reporting anywhere in the world including India. Then we talk about financial statements, which are important financial statements required to be prepared. We have already discussed many times what here for the reporting purpose, I am uh, recalling it for the uh, say, uh, say just a reference purpose. We all know that you have to have a, the complete set of the financial statements includes, that is statement of financial position means balance sheet that depicts the financial position of the firm only for one day. Then is the statement of comprehensive Income means it is a income statement, profit and loss account which gives you the details about trading account, profit and loss account and overall income and expense position of the firm. So it is a comprehensive income statement. Then statement of changes in equity. Sometimes some companies, not in India, it is not very common, but in US some uh, companies prepare the statement of changes in the equity also they prepare that how the share capital is changing what was in the beginning, have they issued more, some more shares in the current year or bonus years in the current year or some change. So there are some companies, when there is a big change in the, so sometimes when any company comes with an IPO or FPO, then the, this statement is required, but in general way, balance sheet serves the purpose, so this is not required, but sometimes some companies can separately give this statement that apart from the balance sheet, some additional information is available in the statement of changes in the equity, but may not be done. Then the third important component is of the financial statement of the set of the financial statements is the cash flow statement. Yes, very important. Nowadays, after 1997, in means 1994, 1st January, IASC and means you call them IASC is now IASB. I will uh, give you the reference of the history of IASC. So IASC came out with the new standard that is the uh, making the cash flow statement mandatory or a statutory uh, statement. So in India also from 1997 onwards, this has become a statutory statement. This is the uh, third statement and then notes. Notes means detailed schedules because balance sheet is only a two page document. It is talking about the assets. So what, how the assets that figure has been arrived at. The details are in the schedule and schedules run thick, maybe some 20, 30, 40, 50 pages. One schedule, some goes up and details of that should be appended to the balance sheet so that if you are satisfied with the first two pages 
with the asset liability position it is fine. But if you want to know in detail that how this asset figure has been worked out, liabilities figure has been worked out or the investments have been worked out, you have to refer to the back detailed schedules which are again required to be prepared by the companies while completing their reporting process. So, these are some of the important financial statements. So, these are the objectives and some important financial statements which are required to be prepared. Some other say reporting related aspects I will be talking to you in my next part of discussion and that will be that will be our last class also. Thank you very much.